Right now, I'd like to talk about taking a solo when you're first beginning to learn how to play the guitar. Blues is one of the, um, the best places to start with. That means 12 bars of chords in the key of E right now. So that would be the key of E has E, A, and B. And we'll utilize seventh chords in this. Now what I'll do is I'll take a group of notes and with these group of notes I'll create what's called a turnaround or it can be used as a beginning as well as an ending. But uh, it's this group of notes that I'll create a little song. <laughs> So it's just that group of notes, a cluster of notes, called a riff. We actually call that a riff, a cluster of notes that'll actually fit all the chord changes I just played. So we'll create a little riff blues song. <laughs> I started out showing you seventh chords and then I went to what's called the E seventh with a raised ninth. Gives it that sound of a little bit more tension, a little bit more gutsy, and it's kind of a combination of blues and jazz when I put that together for that first chord. So about the solo, the solo we can do utilizing some of the same notes that come out of the E minor pentatonic scale. That's just a group of notes that uh, So the pentatonic is a five note scale and we're going to use that. But you know in blues you flatten the third and you flatten the seventh and that's what makes it bluesy. You take those notes, the flatted seventh and the flatted third out of that five note scale and it can sound pretty funky. And now when we roll a couple of other notes into that, we can kind of beef it up, you know, we'll beef it up. <laughs> Put together, it goes like this. So with that groove, it's not only the notes, but how you play them and when you play them. So this is one of those little groove type of group of notes that we call a riff. Then for a solo, you can do something out of those three notes as well. Even though it was the same notes, you set up your little groove riff. So we 
got another riff going on here for a solo. Interesting and add a riff of little melody notes. together and now we have uh, a head a little solo then we build that solo up and beef it up a little bit more that way that's the basic beginning of taking a solo around these 12 bars. the seven chords and then you have your raised ninth chord now there's a, a lot of other things you can do to create your own solo you can pick and choose the notes right out of the chord you can play a chord and then with your fingers in position you can start utilizing the notes right in the chord see a combination of playing notes right within the chord rather than the chord solely slow blues there's what's called delta blues coming from the delta part of the south where blues and jazz originated <laughs> and simple you have that little locomotion going on with actually this is what you call power chord chords those are power chords but as I'm playing I'm actually making chords out of it I'm playing the major major six and the dominant sevens right within the power chord.
that situation, I played a turnaround, and that would be bars 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So instead of playing this, I played a turnaround. Another turnaround, which is equal to this G, F sharp, F, E. So there's more than one way to do a turnaround. Also, in my program and teaching, what I try to do is get people acquainted with the strings, all six of them and their basic lower end of the guitar. This way, they get associated with uh, the strings and the frets. For instance, this is the E string, treble, B treble, G treble. And then after that, we actually have three treble strings and three bass strings. So you get a D, A, and E. So what we've got going on here is just to get acquainted with the first position. It's actually a part of the E minor pentatonic scale. We have little groups of notes that help you to be able to play what sounds like music. And that's the basic idea. So if you learn the E string, the A string, the D string, and the G string, we'll just play something that sounds more like music. That's coming from that first position. All we're going to do is cover open strings up to the fourth fret. Here we go. tablature, it makes it easy to follow because you're just taking strings, frets, and fret positions. And like I said, this only covers the first to the fourth fret. That's what we can do with uh, that group of notes. The other thing is combining notes and chords. We have E, Orpheum Rock, D to A, so with that combination, we can play those chord changes rhythmically with a fill. And when we have that fill and those rhythmic chords going on, it sounds more like music again. And that's the bottom line. we did there is just played an E major to a D major to an A major. And remember we're going over the open strings. Okay, on this one, we're going to do a little slide or slur. So what we're doing is slurring a note here from the third string or G string and using that slide 
from the third fret to the second fret to open string. So we got this. slow we'll slow it down a little bit okay so we got the treble strings and how about adding some bass string to it? The same riff of chords and riff of notes, but adding some of the bass notes to it. So, we're still using the e minor, e minor pentatonic scale. Now, let's do it a little slower. So, here we go again. a combination where you utilize all six strings. That's one way to get started. Of course, you might say, well, where do we go from there? Well, there's a lot of places we can go from there. kind of sweetened it up with uh, a little bit more modern chord changes. These are major sevenths for advancing along. So we made it a little bit more interesting. That's what we call major sevenths, leading right back to the original chord change. Major sevenths have a sweet sound. Dominant sevenths are harsh for the blues. So there we have like a kind of a rock, gutsy, and then we turned it into a mellow group of uh, chord changes, starting with a D major seven. Then we went to an A major seven. To a C major seven, to a G major seven, to a B flat major seven, to an F major seven, right to an E. Chord changes can go anywhere, but that's the thing about chord changes. The idea is to go somewhere, but you come back. And that's what happens in songs, where you have a bridge. A lot of uh, songs in the early 50s and uh, 60s, early 50s and 60s, you could follow pretty easily, because most of the time they did a dominant seventh in there to let you know where the next chord was coming from if you understood chord progression. Chord progressions are the places that you take chords in songs. Uh, power chords are a little easier to uh, maneuver around the fretboard because you're not always accenting the entire chord. Power chords are just the uh, two notes that are the strongest that you take to make up a chord. 
for instance. Okay, there's a power chord, and I'm just making a progression, a very simple progression. Okay, so it gives you an idea of power chords. You can actually take a bass line and just add one more note and you get power chords. So here's an example of what I mean when I say that. Here we go. So we played that. We're just going to add one more note, then we have the power chord. That's all we need to do, and then we have a power chord. So you've probably heard power chords, and they're just that simple to play. All you have to do is get your first finger and your third finger. This A power chord starts with my first finger on the sixth string, fifth fret. My third finger is on the fifth string, seventh fret. And then you just switch over, but you're keeping this distance apart. So you're keeping a distance that, um, regardless of changing the strings, the distance remains the same if you're using the fourth, fifth, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth string. So you can keep your fingers like this. And as you go towards that third string, the sound gets tinnier. It doesn't have as much body. Now chord progressions, as I said earlier, with power chords, you can take bass lines and just kind of make a progression. Um, in power chords, Lots of times it depends upon whether it's heavy metal or soft, soft rock. So you have a bass line that you can just fill with that kind of a progression. When it comes to real chord changes, you do have to make the chord change. For instance. Those chord changes were C, A minor, F minor 6 to G. So, there's a little melody that fits the chord changes. You can start out simple with just the regular triads, F minor, the last chord was G. You can dress it up by using major sevenths. F minor six to G, you can dress it up depends upon what we want to dress it up with. Major, major triad, we use a major seven. A minor, use the A minor seven. F minor, we use the F minor. C 
six. And for G, we can use a G sus. So you see how you can make it sound rock, or you can make it sound bluesy or jazzy. It's a matter of choice of chords and notes. it up with some chord melodies. Chord melodies are when you take the notes and play the full chord. Okay, that's just an overall view of how to take a solo, how to embellish upon chords. In other words, you can create the sound you want. It can be rock, it can be bluesy, it can be jazzy. It's all in a choice of chords. If you want a rock sound, you play power chords. All chords. And rock with chords. And then if you're into folk, you use a lot of open string or notes with open strings as you uh, form lines. In other words, you can play with a, a bass line. Or in jazz, you would put more major sevenths or major ninths, that kind of a situation. So that gives you some idea. My book, I illustrate. Uh, some of these very same things in my book with a chord dictionary, as well as samples of how to play different styles of music. Uh, the idea is to try to learn as many styles as you can and try to learn as much technique about playing those styles as you can. And also matching your scales with the chords. That's one of the biggest benefits of being able to write your own songs uh, make up your own uh, solos and to be able to format music according to the different genres. So when it comes to chords, you see there's many ways to play the same chord. And so you have to know how these chords are formatted. Uh, there's like chords on the starting on your sixth string, chords that start on your fifth string, and basically knowing where it sounds best or what type of way to form the chord so that it does sound its best. Chords are very interesting. You're painting colors when you use chords. You, you can paint a chord according to what takes place in music, what takes place in a movie, and it's very important to uh, realize if you want something var and gutsy, you're not going to get it with a major seventh. You're going to have to go to that dominant seventh, that raw gutsy blues chord. <laughs> Uh, 
verses. Or, you see? So that's some of the differences that you really have got to keep in mind. And um, the genres are always using a certain type of chord. And this is very important. You wouldn't want to use folk chords for a jazz tune. You need to make sure that you know enough different inversions of these different chords to be able to play them in the right places where they sound best. An inversion is just a group of notes that are inverted, maybe starting on third note or the root note or the fifth note. It, it depends upon what kind of a sound and bass line you want. So the idea is to know how to make these inversions so that you're not just playing one chord change all the time, but knowing that there are the same chord changes up and down the fingerboard that you can actually play. Well, for instance, E. 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 And E. So you see, E is up and down the fingerboard the same way C would be. these chords to get the best sound that fits the song that you're actually playing because you don't want to just play a chord because that's the only thing you know. You want to be able to match that chord to the melody of the song and of course the rhythm of the song. best sounding chords there are, which those are just major sevenths. Or Right now I'd like to play one of my originals called Brazilian Jazz Samba, A Cloudy Sunset. Thank you. 
that's just a little bit of the rhythm. But when it comes to taking a solo, you still have this different sort of rhythm that comes from the calypso combination. <laughs> How about riffs? So much with a little bit of an overview of Calypso, the feeling. Of course, then you have reggae. talk about minor pentatonic scales. Minor pentatonic scales, five notes. Those can be very, very effective depending upon where you use them, especially if you're trying to play something funky, really funky. Combinations, combinations of uh, the blues scale and the pentatonic. So when you put that combination together, you hear this a lot. Taking it up and utilizing that formation of group of notes from high to low. Or the reverse.
Now some of that used in major. back to the blues. Combinations of blues and jazz in there. Chord changes. Let's pick it up from chord changes. I gotta go out and get the power unit because this one's out of Talking about uh, chord changes, in jazz, we're utilizing 12 bars of the blues where different chord changes will fit the 12 bars. So we have to end up in the same place, but we have an array and an assortment of chord changes that we can play with. Instead of just playing. We'll sweeten that up with some jazz chord changes.
So it's still 12 bars, but we've put the assortment, the jazz flavor into it by just adding chord changes that will still fit within those 12 bars. So what we do is alter some of the chords or substitute some of the chords. Instead of playing a, a, a seventh chord, we might play an 11th a plus the fifth, augmented 11th, seventh, other seven chords, minus seven chords. And uh, we're just substituting, improvising over the chords. Now, one thing I haven't talked about is some of my influences, uh, people that I felt really brought something to the page as far as playing jazz, or playing combinations of uh, blues and jazz. Wes Montgomery, one of my favorites. <laughs> Use this thumb. Using the thumb, you get a nice, soft, mellow sound. technique, as you see the fingers, finding the octaves from the sixth string to the fifth string to the fourth string or the third and your first string, second and fourth, and then your third and your fifth or your fourth and your sixth. So if you find your way around the guitar, knowing where the octaves are, it makes it pretty easy. There's a scale, here's a C scale. So with that technique in mind, you kind of go around get around the guitar, rather. What Wes Montgomery did was he would just use a lot of the notes that come from the chord. If it's a major seventh chord, he usually just take the first uh, most important notes out of the major seventh chord. C, E, G. Just add more notes for D minor. So you see, it's basically had a lot to do with taking the uh, different notes out of each chord, a major seventh, a minor seventh, and so on and so forth. Um, you can actually do the same thing by um, taking a solo and just making the solo an octave rather than single notes. And that's the uh, general idea. But he also knew how to uh, play a lot of chord melodies. <laughs>
So anyhow, just to give you that overview, and when you hear a lot of blues, a lot of blues is using this minor pentatonic and the blues scale. Kind of summing it up for introductions. Mm -hmm. 